Though many fighters and coaches are doing the right things, they organize their training weeks too haphazardly to get the full training effect or inadvertently cancel out performance gains entirely. At best, this wastes effort. At worst, it burns out fighters and injures them. But you can apply simple steps to design weekly schedules that ensure training is efficient and effective, maximizing results while consuming less time and energy, reducing overuse injuries, and increasing the amount of time for Muay Thai skill practice, or family and friends if you'd prefer. I'll share these steps with you now, and I'll show you how to use them. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatrick Muay Thai Performance. In this episode, we finish breaking down the steps I take when scheduling my clients' weekly training plans. In part one, we covered what the different session types are, how to prioritize them, and how many of each session type you need each week, depending on your competitive level or training time available. If you missed it, check that out first. Building on that foundation, we'll use my checklist of eight sports science best practices to determine which sessions go where and why. We'll look at time blocking each session, and finally, follow seven steps to create your own weekly training schedule. Applying sports science principles to your training drastically improves your results. Research continues to explore how the human body responds to different exercise protocols and different combinations of them. This evolution reveals not only which methods are the most effective and which ones aren't, given your goals, but also which ones don't play nice together and cancel out. As fighters, we easily fall into the trap of just working harder and for longer in order to become better. However, we can be more deliberate and smarter than that. Here's my checklist of eight sports science best practices to get the most out of your weekly schedule. Number one, leave at least 48 hours between consecutive resistance training sessions. And I'm talking about whole body resistance training for fighters here, as it's the most efficient use of time. And this requires adequate recovery before hitting the same neuromuscular movement patterns again. Remember, we're looking to specifically target those strength, power, and speed buckets. If we don't allow enough neuromuscular recovery between sessions, then we're training endurance again and we're missing a trick, leaving athletic performance on the table. Number two, when training multiple sessions in one day, if possible, train cardio or Muay Thai sessions at least three hours away from resistance training to avoid blunting the strength, power or speed training effect. I recommend training one session in the morning and another in the afternoon or evening. That way you squeeze the most out of both sessions. Also, for fighters training more than once a day, if possible, I recommend resistance training in the morning because athletic performance peaks at different times during the daily cycle, depending on when you train. Training strength and power in the evening leads to a peak in those performance qualities at that specific time of day, but a drop off at any other time of day. Whereas, although training strength and power in the morning may be harder, because your central nervous system hasn't woken up yet, it leads to a strong performance ability at any time of day. As Muay Thai fighters, although strength and power are foundation qualities that boost our Muay Thai performance, they aren't required at 100% levels. We're not power lifters or Olympic lifters. We're skilled power endurance athletes that must apply 80% of our maximum power relentlessly for five rounds or until we've stopped our opponent. Not to mention, we could be fighting in the afternoon or at midnight. Let's face it, any time of day if you're competing abroad in a different time zone. Number three, if resistance training and either Muay Thai or cardio training must be trained back to back, train the most important session first. For example, if learning a new Muay Thai skill in a non-fatigue state is your priority, resistance training goes last. However, if long-term strength, power, and speed is your priority, and the Muay Thai session's objective is technique training under fatigue, tough, then resistance training goes first. I've spoken about technical skill practice in a previous episode that I'll link in the show notes for you. Number four, generally don't do more than two challenging sessions back to back. You're spreading your effort too thin and won't work hard enough in any session to overload the body enough to make it adapt and become fitter, and you'll sabotage recovery. The training session is only the trigger stimulus required to make you fitter and stronger. It's during the recovery period after the training stimulus that your body adapts to better cope with that stress in the future. If you're all stimulus and no adaptation, you won't improve. Number five, every training session should target a specific purpose and provide just enough stimulus to make your body adapt and then get out, allowing enough recovery for strength and fitness gains before hitting you with a stimulus again. Apply a minimal training dose, be progressive, and don't jump steps or you'll cut your ultimate progress short or develop overuse injuries. Number six, 
Cardio sessions should develop different energy systems qualities at different stages of a training phase. Further from a fight, training should prioritize aerobic capacity development using longer duration, lower intensity work and transition to aerobic power work using higher intensity, shorter duration intervals. I have an optimal fight camp blueprint download that goes into this for you and I'll link to that in the show notes. It's also important to mention that anaerobic lactic system training shouldn't predominantly feature until closer to the fight or you'll destroy your aerobic power fitness and train yourself to blast hard and gas out if you don't finish your opponent in one round. So save those Tabata intervals until you're at least four weeks out. Number seven, take one or two days rest per week. Yes, two days rest can actually make you better. Remember that rest is as important as the training. You only get better if you recover from the training dose you've applied. Don't become all stimulus and no adaptation. And finally, number eight, long-term athletic progress far exceeds the capability of unsustainable short-term boom and bust cycles. Let your opponents burn themselves out and go round in circles. You should aim beyond your next fight to become a completely different fighter this time next year. Now let's look at the typical amount of time you should budget for the different training sessions. And again, here we're looking for the most efficient use of time, no filler or killer. Typically, resistance training sessions would be about 60 minutes long. If you're using complete body sessions, concurrently training speed, power and strength that I recommend for fighters. Cardio conditioning sessions would typically be up to about 30 minutes long and Muay Thai sessions up to 60 minutes long. Sessions can of course be longer or shorter than these, but these are the typical session durations for the best training effect. Remember, generally going longer means you're doing more than you need to, exceeding minimal dose practicing fatigued form and spoiling your recovery so your next training session becomes less effective. And if you're obsessed about adopting the Thailand training model with two to three hour training sessions, please see them for what they are, multiple sessions joined together with recovery periods in between. Cardio conditioning plus Muay Thai plus muscular endurance body weight conditioning. For simplicity, when structuring your week, block out 30 or 60 minute time slots for each session type in your weekly schedule. This stops you blurring things together and you can more easily organize the time blocks according to the best practices checklist to ensure they're optimally effective too. And when I say optimal, I mean the best with what you've got. I discussed the difference between optimal and peak performance training in another episode that I'll link for you in the show notes. Combined with the part one episode, we now have the foundation understanding and tools in place. We know how many sessions of each type we're looking to fit into each week and how long they're likely to be. Now let's look at where they can practically go. Generally, fighters have greater flexibility regarding placement of weekly resistance and cardio conditioning sessions, whereas Muay Thai sessions are largely timetable group sessions or dependent on meeting up with others too. Using a weekly training schedule template that lists days of the week and splits training into either morning or afternoon evening periods each day, here are seven steps to help you build out your training week. One. Begin by listing any sessions that have to be at certain days and times. And these are usually timetabled classes or private one-to-one -one coaching sessions. Two, now where can you practically place your resistance training sessions to best effect? Remember to use the best practices checklist. Three, where can you place any remaining Muay Thai sessions? These are usually your solo practice sessions. Four, where can you place any remaining cardio conditioning sessions? Five, which days are you taking as rest days? Six, check that you've considered the scheduling training best practices. Seven is a bonus step. If you don't have enough time to fit everything in that you want, can you get up earlier to fit in training before work or studies? Or at the very least, remember that as long as you're hitting the minimum training model, you are consistently progressing. Short-term boom and bust training, typically between one fight and the next, sees your performance going around in circles. Whereas consistent long-term progress massively outperforms boom and bust training. Long-term awesome is your goal, not short-term show off. This is now your best guess at an optimal schedule. The best you can do with what you've got. But you'll need to try it out and see if your assumptions were practical. If your weekly progress is continually improving, that is you're able to hit your high week training targets every four week training block and beginning the next four week training block feeling good to go after your deload week, then you've got it about right. If not, you'll need to take a closer look and run through the planning process again, considering what you've learned in reality. 
And once you've found what works, you've discovered what is optimal for you right now. But life happens. Don't be too rigid. If it's not possible to place your sessions exactly where you want them one week, try to complete as many of your target number of sessions as you can. Doing something is far better than nothing. If you can't fit all the sessions in one particular week, prioritize the most important sessions for your training block and get those done, dropping the others. Then try and return to the full schedule as soon as practical. I hope this look at developing an effective weekly training plan has proven helpful. And if you want to download a copy of the weekly training schedule template, you'll find that along with lots of other resources on the show notes page that I'll link for you in the caption. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles and guides. Catch you next time.